why have I bought so many cameras yeah. and why do I ride with so many cameras? It is amazing. I recommend everyone comes to the Valencia region of Spain and in particular this amazing place we're at. Today is going to be more gear related. We're just going to look at a huge pile of cameras. We've got Lumix, we've got Olympus, we've got Fujifilm, Sony, Ricoh and then obviously Leica that we can compare to. I've got the little CL here. Hi guys, Matt Osborne here from MrLucker.com. So today David has kindly invited me to his cycling retreat in the Valencia region of Spain. David and I both share a passion in both cycling and photography. And for me personally, one advantage of having a bike is you can see a much wider area when it comes to visiting a new city or a new region, but rather than having to walk everywhere. First, we have a compact super zoom from Lumix. This is a uh, Lumix TZ200, ZS200, I think, in the US market. Fantastic little camera with a Panasonic Leica 24 to 360 super zoom, uh, which is obviously a, a lot of range in one hand. Um, it's a super easy camera to use. It's a one inch sensor. So for social media stuff, there's more than enough latitude with the raw files. Even the JPEGs out of camera can be quite nice. It doesn't have a, a tilting screen, but it, has a, it does have a, a small EVF, which is not brilliant, but for compositional purposes, fantastic. This, if I'm on a road bike and we're going traveling light and with the leash, uh, I can either put it in a back pocket. So it's really good for getting action shots right next to people. I find with that as well, the 24 uh, is, is really handy because you can frame it in horizontal or portrait mode, stick it in uh, burst and just get a whole bunch of shots and pick the best. Uh, and I find it pretty good as well. It's got stabilization as well. And, and the images are, uh, really surprise me. Um, all one-handed, everything's totally one-handed, which on the bike is better than riding around yeah. no-handed. <laughs> It's got a high contrast black and white screen as well, which in the sun, just being able to, to see the screen in black and white and shoot um, and then post-process in raw. So used, I would say anything around 300. Premium camera, new can be five to 600, I think. The sharpness is best at the, the wide end, pretty good up to the 100. And next we have the first of two Micro Four Thirds cameras. So we've got an EP5, so a relatively new purchase of an old camera. Uh, Micro Four Thirds, interchangeable lenses, in white, Black and silver, there's an all black edition as well, but that, that's pretty hard to get a hold of. They're anything from about 150 to 200, depending on condition uh, on eBay. That's, that's pounds. pounds. Really nice flip up screen, really bright screen. Nine millimeter Olympus pancake, which is for cycling terms, it's good enough for Instagram type stuff. Got built in lens cap with auto ISO, you're just shooting whatever you like. Concentrate on getting a picture. It's a lot better than you would think for yeah. uh, a 70 pound lens that's brand new from Olympus. And it's a really nice camera to use. It's really. <laughs> it looks really pretty. I think it's similar to one of the original film yes, uh, film lenses photo that you Pen F, yeah, Pen F, which is a similar size, but they're significantly more expensive and more collectible, and feature sets not vastly it's different. Very better value for money. It's much better value for money. Next, we have a tiny Ricoh GR. This is the Ricoh GR3, 28 millimeter fixed lens, folds away, f2.8. You're ready to shoot in about half a oh, second. It's the same as this. Significantly smaller. I don't know of any other camera that as small as that that has anything like the same kind of image quality. Personally, uh, I prefer it to Fuji image quality. The JPEGs and the RAWs uh, are both really good. They are expensive. They, um, I think the retail's about 800 pounds. Premium compact, yeah. No EVF, you can buy an external EVF. So if you're running a film camera, if you've got a 28 millimeter finder, you could probably put that on. Rico make their own. Yeah. Um, I think it has 28mm and 21mm lines on it. I also have the 21mm adapter lens oh, for this. Clips on the front, yeah. The other cool thing with these cameras is they take uh, Nissi filter sets, which are tiny. One of the lenses I like to use, people might be thinking, why well, have you got a Ricoh GR3 and uh, an EP5? And this is the EP5 with a Panasonic Leica 15mm. With Micro Thor thirds being interchangeable, you can use uh, um, some of the super small lenses. This is a 35 to 100, which is the same as carrying around a 70 to 200 lens. It's not fast <laughs> at f4 to f6. It's more than good enough for social media stuff at, at f4. And now one for you Fuji shooters. We've got a nice Fuji, uh, it's a simple camera, XA7, a Bayer sensor, not the x sensor. Fully articulating screen, it's really handy cycling to be able to cover off the back screen, especially if it's, if it's going in the back pocket. They're about 400, I think. Quite often it comes with a kit lens of 15 to 45, which is 22 mil at the wide end, which for kit lens is, is super handy. Yeah, yeah the, the only other wider kit lens I know we're, we're shooting on at the moment is the, the 20 to 60 uh, yeah. Panasonic Leica, which is a great little lens. 
Uh, but this micro lens on there, that's super handy. It's a good lens, uh, stop down. It's, um, it's not super sharp, pancake okay. size. The files don't need much editing to look good enough. Give them some photos within an hour or two of their ride and they're posting on, on Strava and... The coffee shop stop handed portrait in all their gear and they have the, uh, the logo. They're riding up mountains somewhere nice. They want pictures to take away with them. And next a pro body from Olympus. The OMD. This is the OMD M1. It's a little bit bigger. It's the professional camera. It's, it's, a, it's about 500 grams. It's a really nice form factor. Again, super easy to use one-handed. Micro four thirds. Micro four thirds again. And I'm not precious about micro four thirds or full frame. I've got a, a variety of stuff for Sony and Panasonic. But fully weather sealed. Much better tracking than some of the smaller cameras and much faster burst rate. So if we want to do some action shots of people. And we have a, another a Pani Leica. A Leica lens, 12 to 60 lens. For anybody that wants a camera that size but full frame I see you also have a Sony yeah so I have a Sony yes I've not forgot you Sony fans the Sony AR7 series roughly the same size obviously the full frame glass is a little larger I don't take the Sony out on the bike as much as the micro four thirds stuff primarily because of form factor lens form factor not the well, not the body form nice factor way. this is my Q2 equivalent so it's a 20 mil F2, uh, has IBIS, it's got a really nice viewfinder actually. Uh, so all the way around, just pop Yeah, out. it's just a flip. Probably half the price of a, a Q2. So with uh, lens and... With phone. lens, yeah. Th this is a, a pretty interesting lens, an adapter lens that's specifically made by Sony for the 28. It gives you 21 millimeters. Stop down, it's more than usable, it's pretty good. Um, I've got a Zeiss Milvis 21, obviously not as good as that. And with the crop factor and Super 35 mode, I've got 21, 28 and 42 megapixels in, in one camera. If you enjoyed the content and format of this video, hit subscribe because I've got another video coming on small bags and tripods and compact stuff to use with your cameras. As always, a massive thanks to my amazing patrons. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.